Hey, what's up? It's me, Ben. I'm back with another video. On my last video, a lot of people had questions about the wood backdrop, so I decided to make a video and kind of show more in depth how I built that and kind of the sizes they have in case you want to build that. Plus, I'm also going to go over some of the other stuff we have. So please like and subscribe, and let's get started. All right, so this is the hot air balloon. We also have this in pink and blue. Um, it was pretty easy to set up. It took me a while to figure out what we wanted to go on, but this is perfect. This one right here, this is actually probably one of my favorite ones. This is a basket. So I wanted to create a hot air balloon one. And what kind of gave me some trouble was I was trying to look for a basket to buy something for like a table. And um, there was nothing I could find. And even the baskets I found were small, but they were three, four hundred dollars for a basket. And it wasn't even going to be what I was going to need. Uh, so I took some time to think about it and I actually created this myself. Um, so here's all the way around. There's the backing. This is the back. The inside. Um, it's pretty light. You can just oh, lift it up. Uh, so when I wanted to build this, I wanted to incorporate how they built baskets. So I kind of researched it a little bit and uh, they kind of do a little weaving thing and I thought about it a different ways. Uh, as many ways as I could figure out what would be the best looking and easiest way to do it. It's the thinnest plywood they sell. It's like $10 a sheet. This one's good. Uh, three inches. So I went three inch slices you can see here. And all I did first, I put the siding. And then I went um, by each one on the corners. Just like that. I put these going down. And then each of those three inch pieces, tucked them in and just went over, under, over, under, over, under, over, under. On each one kind of slid them into place and then I just tacked them nails on the corner and it actually came out exactly the way I was hoping it came out like a basket I actually love this setup it's one of my favorite setups and then I was trying to think on how to create a basket and so this took me a while I actually welded this together and then spray painted and put some tape around here just because I wanted to make sure none of the sharp edges would touch the balloon that I'm about to put on there um, the balloon I bought was from Etsy. It was a five foot balloon and so it was a risk. Um, what I did is I got, I got some metal plates, um, some metal piping from Home Depot and I had a um, metal bender. It took me a while but I ended up bending this circle into the exact diameter I need. Or maybe 16. Around 15 to 16 inches. It's not a perfect circle. Um, but I, will, I, belt, I bent this into a circle about 15 to 16 inches and then I welded these on the corners brought them down, welded it to this plate, and then I just screwed it to this bottom right here. These plates are 18 inches, and the top of this is three feet. Uh, this basket is four feet wide, two feet tall, and 32 inches high. I'm about to attach the balloon, and we'll, we'll see how that shows up. All right, this is the hot air balloon I got. I got it off of Etsy. I uh, can't remember how much I paid. I'll try to show in the link. Uh, I have this in blue and pink. Uh, when I bought the pink, it actually came with the blower, which worked out perfect. I put these on the edges, it depends on wind, uh, this one busted, I usually have this tied back but it looks sketchy. And then I tie little hooks at the bottom and I pull each side just in case some wind comes by. These are pulling all the corners of the balloons and there's attachments at the top corners and so this will keep the balloon from swaying. I try to not recommend this for outdoor events just because any bit of wind will kind of give you some trouble. So I try to save this one for indoors as much as I can. But on a good weather day or anything, nah, this, this 
will work out perfect. I'm not really tying these the way I normally do because I'm just showing you, but I also have one in the corner. This one kind of went out. Tie this at the bottom. Again, this is my favorite one. I like the way the basket comes together. Everything. I also have a different cloth cloth that I didn't bring right now. I don't have it with me. But I have a blue and a pink one, pink one that I picked up from Walmart. There's a blue that exactly like this blue. And what I do... What I do is I drape it all around the corner. So all of this is like draped in blue. I tuck it under so it kind of gives a little fluff kind of coming under. So all this top will be draped in blue. All right, and then some people had some questions about the plinths. Um, I'm actually gonna do a video on how to make them. But just for now, I'll show you kind of an idea of what I did. I cut out two circles, one like this, one on the top. I ran some two by fours all along the side and what I did different, there's some plastic material in the Home Depot aisle and um, it's white. I put it around on the back edge. I put this and just tacked it with the screw. It's on there. And then I did some little bit of nail guns on the top corner and then I painted it with some glossy white paint. But what I like about this versus like metal and other ones, um, they can take a hit. See how you see this? Uh, especially with a lot of transport, putting them in a trailer, people using them and abusing them like this will be like this you can stick your hand and push it out so these are these come in handy a lot because so many times this thing has been hit especially transport like that just comes back so uh, i love the plastic that i use on the side works out great uh, but again i'm i'm gonna remake a video and i'll show you how i make one of these because definitely i was trying to figure out it's a lot of different ways and a lot of times you'll buy them and they're out of metal and that's easier because you can stack them together but uh, I was worried more about dents or anything on a dent in the middle. You're gonna be able to see it, especially in the photograph. This just pops right back out. So we have the gap here. This is, there's about an inch. There's an inch gap. Um, these are three fourths. They sell them at Home Depot as one and these are, these are eight, so they're ten. These are actually nine and a half, but um, at Home Depot they're gonna say um, one by ten, but they're actually gonna be three fourths by nine and a half. Um, and you can see, I just screw in this one. As you can see, this just slides right in and out. When I first did this. I made this the same size as, as this, the three-fourths, and it was too snug. So um, what I did is I re-added just a little bit. You can come see in here. I can't remember if that's masonite or it's just a very thin piece of plywood. Uh, you can find them at, well, if you see in there on this top, the very top, it's like a, a masonite board. It's very, uh, the thinnest um, plywood that they sell, but this is actually masonite. I just needed something just a little bit extra just to give it a little bit more of a gap so the boards can slide in and out without getting stuck. Because when I first made it, they were getting stuck a lot. So when I did this, it gave it just a little bit more of a gap. I'm gonna say maybe a, a quarter inch more, and it gave it a little bit more of a gap. So with this, they slide up and down real easy. There's some slag in there. I just put in a screw only on the rustic side and it holds it in and then I'll start filling them in slowly. If you come around here, you see I have screws all on the side of this. This is where we can attach the balloons um, and we just wrap a 260 or whatever you need around this and that'll hold the balloons together. We have them up there and at the very top I have a little hook and we attach the balloon garlands there. When I look at it, it is 8 feet tall by 8 feet wide. Um, the bottom flooring is three feet and on this side I got a angle iron bracket uh, for like um, they sell it at the Home Depot it's um, usually a uh, silver I think it's in the fencing aisle 
I got this bracket and screwed it into this side, but I didn't want that same same look on this on the rustic side. It would have looked funny. Um, or no, a two by ten, and I actually just cut it at a little angle, a little groove um, with a jigsaw, and then I get I routed out the edge with my router on the same thing around the edge, and I just screwed it down with some wood glue, and that gave this side solid, and the metal keeps this side solid, and this thing is rock solid. It doesn't go anywhere. And then as, as you can see from the inside, I added two of those masonite boards on both sides of the sandwich. So what I did here, this is a one by six and this is a one by six. And all I did is I got a, a one by three and I sandwiched it in the middle. So I got two two by sixes, put them like this and I sandwiched a one by three in the middle. And then I added also those little thin masonites one by three just to make it a little more wider. So these boards can, they'll slide right in instead of being snug they'll slide and they still have a little bit of gap because a lot of times with wood uh, they can um, swell or move around a little bit and you don't want them to kind of get stuck so right now it's a perfect size the masonite probably gave us about in there I put it on this side on both sides you'll see the little masonite it's the thinnest um, type of plywood they have just to give it maybe a quarter inch to a half inch gap a little bit bigger than what, the, what we need so this gap is about one inch and that allows these boards to slide in perfectly without getting caught so all I did just sandwich two boards together with a thinner with the one three boards in the center and these just slide in perfect. Think of it like a U and it just kind of slide all the way down. All right, I'm going to put the rest of them on there. It's hot out here. So much slack I got right there. And just slide this side down and then Bring this one, still plenty of slack, so they slide right in. Easy. A lot of times that wood will swell and then it'll make it difficult later on. This side in, this side up. Boom. This side in. This side up. Second one. Same thing, and that slides right in perfect. I learned to put a screw right at the top. That helps out when I put it on the top. If um, we need to pull the balloon garland up in the middle, we just tie a 260 to that and it'll tighten it. Last one, slide in. Perfect. And as you can tell, um, I actually only have one screw in and that's at the bottom. The rest of these are not screwed in and you can already tell this thing is solid. It's, it's, it's not going anywhere. Remember because it has the three foot bottom by seven and a half. So, to, so it's a three by eight. I have a, It's three foot long by eight foot wide by two inches deep. If you go to Home Depot, you'll find it. This is a two by eight and I just cut it to three feet on both sides and that's a very solid platform. And usually I'll put three or four more screws up here, usually just here, here, and here. Um, and that makes it way more sturdier. So stacked out together the sides of this. In total, they come out to two and a half inches this way, two and a half inches. And that's with the one by six, one by six, one by three, and then those two um those two masonite boards the very thin plywood that i cut the same size as the two as the one by threes and that just gives that extra spacing so the boards can kind of wiggle around a little bit so they don't get stuck and then if you look on this side this is the white wall um it's just white on this side the legs are white and again this is an eight by eight by eight Two by um, one by sixes on the side, one by sixes on the side, one by tens going down. These are one by tens. The bottoms are two by eights cut into three feet. Two by eights into three feet. Eight foot that way, eight foot up. Hopefully, that has all the measurements. Please like and subscribe, it really helps our channel grow.